Welcome ladies and gentlemen to season 2 episode number 24 of The Music Spring. This is the 15th of October 2014. Please let me welcome the host of The Music Spring, Lisa Farr. To episode 24 of season 2 of The Music Spring. I can't believe we're already up to episode 24 and only six shows to go till the end of the season. Today we're going to be talking about publicity and how we transition from doing it ourselves as artists to getting pros on board and really taking our our whole presence online and, and in the local scene that we're working in to a whole new level. Uh, this is an important stage and progression for any artist that's becoming a music entrepreneur. And joining me today, we have two experts at this. We have Alyssa from the East Coast in the US. Hey, Alyssa. Hi, how are you? Good, welcome back. So great to have you, darling. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And we have Marcia also returning from Canada. Hi, Marcia. How are you? Hi, Lee. How are you? Really good. Thank you so much for coming on, even though you have a lost your voice. It's coming back, but yeah. <laughs> this Wait, I, I promise to be kind. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Why don't you give us a refresher, Marcio, on on your involvement in the music business as an artist and your connection with publicity. Oh, geez. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a musician, filmmaker, and um, been uh, doing self, do, do-it-yourself publicity for most of my career until uh, I released my debut full-length record when I, it was, it was the first time I uh, decided to hire a proper publicist. So I guess that's why I'm on the show today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you You've totally transitioned from that whole DIY, doing it yourself, understanding the ins and outs of doing that, and then transitioned to outsourcing it. And you've had oh, some yeah. horror well, stories. Well, yeah, I, I have, but it, I, I still do a lot of the stuff myself. But I think um, I, I think I, I think there's it's an important. Um, there comes a point where you need to also decide if it's time to start working with someone else. I don't think you should ever just hand anything over to somebody else in any whether that's a production you know uh, working on an album or music production or that's management or um, you know I think some of the, the most successful people out there are some of the people that that stand out I think always have their hands on everything you know like someone like David Bowie or something like that you know mm. they, they didn't just go okay here take care of it you know they're they're always on yeah. it or Prince or people like that you know they're hands on you know so those are you know that's kind of what I aspire to it's a, it's an important element of maintaining the integrity of your brand, I guess. You know, if you yeah. hand everything over to somebody else, you're never really going to be able to be across the whole lot. Exactly. So, Alyssa, uh, publicist extraordinaire, <laughs> tell us about tell us about your career. So, I work at a publicity firm called Riot Act Media, and I handle publicity and media relations for a roster of record labels and independent artists. Um, typically this takes place around the release of an album or in preparation for a tour. Um, in what little time I have outside of work, I also run a record label of my own and keep a blog. So I feel like I come at things sometimes both as the publicist on one side or as the client when I'm mm. on the label side of things. Um, so I think that sort of gives me a unique perspective when I'm trying to figure out how to fit all these pieces together and how to keep it all sustainable. Tell us what a publicist does, Alyssa. I think that the chief duty of a publicist is being your liaison between band and media and fostering these relationships between media, whether that's radio or bloggers or print journalists. Um, and really getting to know these writers and figure out like what their tastes are and what what they want to cover and what they need to cover something, how much lead time someone needs. Um, and after building on those relationships, then you can sort of play matchmaker between band and writer. And if someone comes to you with a great hip-hop record, you can think of your five you know, best hip-hop writers that you have relationships with and get in touch with them and let them know that the album's coming out and work towards coordinating reviews, video premieres, track premieres, interviews, um, really like fostering that communication between both sides. A lot of the time I hear artists say, 
I need to find a publicist to make me famous. And, uh, <laughs> don't, don't you hear that, Marcio? <laughs> I've heard uh, many, many things here. Or, or I have to get signed and everything will be good. <laughs> yeah. You know, a publicist is going to help me get signed, get that record deal. A publicist is going to help me get famous. Um, a publicist is going to make my song number one. I mean, that's not the role of a publicist, <laughs> right? No. Um, the other day, I had someone who was working with an artist say, like, oh, how are you going to make so-and-so rich? And I had to just kind of laugh and sweetly say, like, well, you know, if I knew, like, the surefire way to make someone rich, I, too, would be rich. You know, like, I'd probably start with myself, for one. Um, <laughs> how selfish of you, Alyssa. I know. I know. But it's like, you know... If I can make someone rich, uh, <laughs> I might not be driving like a 98 Honda Civic around town. Or <laughs> um, but I think, you know, a lot of times I hear artists definitely coming with this, like, I want to be on every TV program. I want to be on every radio station. And it's fine to want that, but you have to think realistically. And I, you know, often warn people, like, maybe be a little apprehensive of, a publicist that does promise you like the moon and stars right off the bat, um, yeah. because these are things that you work up to. It's actually oh, yeah. funny you say that, Alyssa. Uh, this, this is my second time on the music screen. The first time I was on there, I think uh, the advice I gave to anyone was uh, don't trust anyone who promises you anything. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, I always <laughs> and I stand by that. <laughs> I always promise you the moon and the stars is definitely not going to be able to deliver that because they know nothing about the music industry if they think that they can deliver on shit like that. The one thing <laughs> someone should promise is that they are going to work as hard as possible to try to get you that. You know, we'll always Absolutely. explain it to people as if you hire a publicist, you are probably more likely to get press than if you hadn't. But I cannot, um, I can't force anyone's hand. I can't call Pitchfork and uh, guarantee that they are going to review your record um, because music is subjective and it has to come down exactly. to editorial decisions and, and writers' tastes. Yeah, and, and the thing is like when you're picking a publicist, the idea is that you want to be looking for somebody who's got the relationships. That's what you're hiring somebody for. Not, mm -hmm. You're not picking a publicist because they're going to make you famous. You, they have the connections, right? And that's, the, I think, a common misnomer that artists have, um, that they don't understand that the thing that a publicist can bring to the table is that they can get your stuff in front of the right people. They can't guarantee But you have to have the stuff. Sorry? I was saying, but, and, but you have to have the stuff so that yeah. they can bring it to people. Um, exactly. I'll often tell people that, you know, like, the better assets you give me to work with, the better work I can do. Let's, let's go to that because an important element of this is assets and, and, and Master, you're a filmmaker, you're, you've got your, you're across all of, of your business. Tell us from the perspective of a musician and from the perspective as a filmmaker, when you were doing your own DIY stuff, uh, in publicity, how important were having the right assets to you? Oh man, you know what? I think it was more so about um, finding the right people to work with and if you couldn't find those right people, learning how to do it yourself. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of where I've always come from. Um, I, I, I do mostly everything myself, not because I want to, but because I have to. Yeah. And you know, when it, when it came to a point where I, um, it just I mean, there's only so many hours in the day, and there's only so so far my arms can reach. Sort of freak you guys out here by doing that. Uh, that's when you. That's when it's. Uh, that's when it's time to bring in, um, you know, the right people. And yeah. it sometimes can can it, it can be a trial and error thing to bring in the right people. You have to go through the wrong people sometimes to find the right people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of why. Like even even becoming a filmmaker. Um, it's something I, it was always in the back of my mind I wanted to do, but I became it because um, I had to. You know what I mean? There wasn't a budget or money to hire someone else, so I had to learn how to do it. And I discovered that it's something I love to do. It's, and I realize I love storytelling, whether that's through music or film or, or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. 
Alyssa, when, when, when we do talk about assets, and for anyone who doesn't understand that term, we're talking about things like music videos and uh, remixes and press releases and all the different little things that come with uh, being able to hand over to your publicist and say, this is what I've got for this album release. Um, do something with it. What, let's, I guess let's start at what kind of assets are you looking for? when, when a, an artist approaches you? So the, the basic things that I need to get started are your finished album. Um, you know, I don't want to send writers rough mixes or unmastered tracks because even though sometimes you might think, oh, we'll just give someone like an idea where we're going, you definitely want to put your best foot forward and share your finished product. Um, so I need music. I need band photos. And sometimes there can be some confusion where you know people will send me a couple great live snapshots that their best friend took at a show, and you know when we say band photo, it doesn't necessarily have to be like your stereotypical like walking down railroad tracks, you know, like looking <laughs> at, off into the distance and, and being very dramatic. But it we've all done something it, man. more. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm not even in a band, and I've taken that we've kind of picture. Uh, I've been oh, yeah. Yeah, the odd one here. I haven't walked down railroad tracks. So I have to call my photographer now and make that happen. It's a or, or, or looking out on the artist. ocean. <laughs> yes. Looking out on the ocean. I've done the ocean one a million times, but the railroad tracks. I think that. Wow, I'm surprised my publicist hasn't said something to me about I've done my... it. I did press. <laughs> I did press photos back in the day on train tracks, you know, and oh, oh gosh. <laughs> We yeah. live and we learn, my friends. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, a I right left that <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It is, isn't it? <laughs> so, that's what I've been doing wrong. It's the railroad <laughs> track photo that I'm missing. Now I'm going to get super famous because of it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's all it takes. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry, I oh, sorry, derailed you there. Boom, boom. Oh, Go on. <laughs> derailed. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I know, right? <laughs> that was terrible. Um, <laughs> continue. <laughs> um, so band photos are important. Um, you want a photo that ideally says something about your band. You don't have to reach too far and make everything way too symbolic. Um, but it's a it's a chance to show a little bit of your identity and get your aesthetic across, which there's a whole other topic of perhaps developing what your aesthetic looks like so that your album art between records and your band photos sort of look like they all come from the same band yeah. instead of disjointed cool ideas that were all thrown together. Um, album art. It is a good idea to have a video or two. Um, I find that people are a lot more likely to premiere concept videos but I think live videos are also, or, or like studio performance type videos are also important to have handy because maybe someone wants to invite you to play an event and they want to know what your live performance is like. Can you translate it from record to performance? Um, mm -hmm. Your bio is a really important component because your bio will sort of become the skeleton of a press release. And I think it's important to touch upon your background what your music sounds like. You know, sometimes I'll read a wonderful bio that talks all about the artist, but it doesn't actually tell me like what's the music like before I've heard it. How would you um how do you want your music to be framed, basically? If if someone was going to talk about your album, this is your chance to let people know all the things that you think are relevant about your music. Mm -hmm. um, and then background information on the album. Did somebody noteworthy record you or mix or master? Um, have you collaborated with anyone interesting? Um, it's kind of your chance to tell your story. And so things, with regards to the bio, do you like a short bio? Do you like a long bio? Do you like both? I like both. I think they both have different purposes. You know, mm -hmm. If I'm going to send out a press release, I want to include everything a writer could possibly need, just to make it as, you know, if, if you want someone to do you a favor, it's good to try to do it, make it as easy as possible for them to help you. So yeah. I want to make sure I'm putting as much information as I can in front of you in an organized way um, without like overwhelming you with way too many fun facts. <laughs> but I think a short bio is really handy for, say, the info section on your Facebook page. Or yeah. if I'm sending a personal email to a writer, I might have a little blurb that I work from that's like, hey, you know, 
I want you to check out Lisa Far. I think you'd like it, and have a couple sentences that describe what they can expect to hear. Awesome. Awesome. Because a lot of the time, artists don't know whether they're sending too much or not enough, or mm -hmm. um, should you know should I send a couple things and wait to be asked for more? Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can never give a potential publicist too much information. The more assets yeah. you have, the better it's going to be for them to be able to make a decision whether they want to work with you or not. Mm -hmm. um, Marcia, oh, I want to go on, Alyssa. Please, please, I was go just going to say, in terms of assets, to wrap that up, um, a lot of times I recommend that people get in touch with a music writer who might take on bio writing jobs as like an outside gig, because it can be really difficult to talk about yourself, and sometimes it can be hard to see the things about yourself that are actually really interesting to others, and I think a, a music writer knows what sort of information music writers are after, so it can yeah. be helpful to you know go ahead and invest maybe $150 in getting a really solid bio together, since that will yeah, be used on your website, your Wikipedia, yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, f uh, when I launched my, my, my debut record, my full length, that was the first time I hired a bio writer. It's something I had always written my bios before myself. And, uh, you know, they weren't too bad in the sense I, I learned how to start to be objective and not being like, I'm awesome. <laughs> you yeah. know, but, uh, and, I, and there was a point where, you know, a friend of mine did help me out, help me be objective and everything. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was money well spent. It was you know I, I just had a conversation with them and, and they wrote um, you know objective view of my career and, and how to and how and how to send that out to how to help my publicist send that out. You know what I mean? And, and have people actually be interested. You know, um, yeah, it's an important aspect. That that's that's such an important point with regards to learning how to do that stuff and I think it's important for artists to understand that your DIY phase is critical to you learning about the business. Everyone has to go through it now. It's, it serves a purpose. It's like your apprenticeship in how to be a full-blown music entrepreneur and there are a lot of mistakes that artists make but it's okay. Like th That's the time <laughs> to be making them. Marcio, I want to talk to you about that idea of what mistakes we make as DIY artists during our DIY phase. <laughs> Writing your own bio. <laughs> I think it's important though, like I remember writing my first bio and it took me 12 hours. I sat there for 12 hours <laughs> writing and rewriting and okay. rewriting. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be on the show today because honestly like I've spent probably about a decade, if not longer because I've been in, in bands before, but you know, a, a lot of my life uh, doing things myself. You know, mm -hmm. do it yourself. So, you know, I know we already talked about the bio, but the good thing about writing your own bio is you're not paying somebody else. And if you're not looking to do a whole publicity campaign and you're still starting out, there's nothing wrong with that. Or even if you can get a close friend or somebody to help yeah. you write about, that's great. Um, I'm a big believer in, in doing things yourself, especially in the beginning, even if that beginning ends up being five, six years, whatever, whatever, everyone's on their own journey. Um, because you start learning these things and you start appreciating. Like, I really appreciate... Uh, what Alyssa does, I appreciate what my publicist does because I know that it's hard, right? And I, mm -hmm. and, and I also find value in that. And um, but yeah, it's it's so important to learn how to do everything yourself. I think as many things as possible, but it's also so important to know when it's time, you know, yes. to take that next step and and bring someone else on your team. And not everyone on your team. It might not be right to bring a manager on or to bring someone else on. But um, Alyssa could probably agree with me on this. I think uh, the first, you know, professional besides a be, uh, besides a producer, besides besides a producer and someone you're working on the, the actual record with, but once you've got that aside, you know I think a publicist is one of the most important people to bring on because they're the ones that are going to help you you uh, get people talking about you. Because there's only so much as well you can tweet about yourself. There's only so much you can be like check this out, check that out. For me, I find not only are interviews or you know things like things like this are a little bit different. We talk about the industry itself, but in this, in interviews help you talk about you know what you're doing in a little bit of a different light in a different way and then you can share that with your, your audience and it's not so abusive it's not so attacking them with like you know just sending them stuff all the time so I, I think it's a it's a very valuable asset yeah How, what do you think about that Alyssa I think it's important um, I think for people to support what you're doing whether that is releasing a record or going on a tour they have to know that you're doing it um, whether that is you finding a way to tell your story or having someone help you, 
you know, people have to know that that album exists so that they can go buy it. You know, the, yep. the, no one can ever make it, like we were talking about with guarantees, no one can ever guarantee, you know, hiring a publicist is going to equal 1,000 copies sold or 2,000 copies sold or 10 million copies sold, but you probably have a better chance of getting people interested in your music when someone is helping you spread that message and helping you tell your story based on experience that they have from doing it before. You know, you mm -hmm. know as a, I think it is important to do as much as you can on your own first. It's important to learn how yes. to do it. You will have, you'll work better with others after you've tried it yourself, really. Yeah. Um, what are some of the mistakes that DIY artists make when it comes to doing their own publicity? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, not giving people enough lead time. And, you know, that is something that I only know just from doing this over many years and talking to different writers about what they need. But, you know, sometimes I'll get emails that are like, all right, last call for your spring records. And you're looking at your calendar and you're like, my spring records aren't even, like, mastered yet. You know, some of these bands haven't even gone into the studio yet. Um, a lot of places need a lot of lead time. And even on the publicity side, sometimes I'll get an email from a band that's like, hey, our record comes out in three weeks. We want to hire you. And that's when you have to have a serious discussion about lead time. You know, can you push your release back? You, you spent so much time and money putting together this wonderful piece of music, and you want to make sure you give people enough time to really marinate on it and listen to it and write about it. Well, I was also going to say that you you got to make sure that your music's good <laughs> because, you know, the publicist is vouching for that artist and they're putting their reputation on hold. If you, if you, you know, if you don't continuously send good music, those people are going to stop opening your emails, you know, and if, even if you're doing it yourself, if you are going to do it yourself, you know, if you're going to contact press, which isn't a bad thing if it's, I think if it's in your own city, which is probably where you're supposed to start. That's where I started. Um, mm -hmm. You're most likely, I think, to be heard from someone in your own city. You know, they, they want to, I think most of the time they want to support people from their own city. Um, so that's, that's where I think people should start, right? But, <laughs> yeah. But I would think like I said, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like agree. Like I said, it's your reputation, you know? I agree completely about sort of like having your own city on lock before you bring someone else in. You know, that's, I think, one of the indicators of figuring out um, when am I ready for a publicist and when should I keep trying on my own, you know? Um, if you live in your city and you're actively playing shows there and participating in your music scene, but you haven't picked up any attention there, you might not be ready yet. But if you have yeah. sort of conquered everything you can in your city or, you know, the couple cities around that you play shows in frequently, then you might be ready. Um, but it's like yeah, this we sort of point out that stones. publicists work through on regions, right? So, I mean, like, you might... Like, for me, it was the right time for me to get a Canadian publicist, right? But it's not the right time for me to get an American or a UK publicist. I'm not touring out there or anything, right? Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean I don't do, you know, interviews with a UK um, press or America, but they're not as planned. You know what I mean? It's it's you gotta th you got to be smart about it. So what I'm trying yeah. to say is, even though i got a publicist, I still do. There's still the DUI, DIY aspect to it. Mm. You know? So yeah. That's important. There's a... So for me, going into this new album project that I'm doing next year, uh, you know, we're working on getting the right publicists for that. We'll have a, a local publicist and we'll have an international publicist uh, in a couple different regions purely because it's going to be an international project, mm -hmm. co-write with everyone all over the world, blah, blah, blah. But there are things that I do do on my own for my own publicity. So, for example, I... Um, I do this thing once a month that is called Miss Lee Live. So instead of press interviewing me by video, I get a, a different fan that gets to interview me every month for an hour via a Google Hangout. And uh, they get to ask me anything that they want for an hour. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm stealing that. <laughs> yeah, I hope every artist in the world steals it. Um, it's a really great way for fans to be able to ask you the questions that they really want to know and it's a really, we announced, it was a, a great opportunity for me at the time to announce my new clothing line uh, that comes with the whole red feather theme of my brand and the fan that was interviewing me was actually the artist who drew the artwork that went on the clothing line. So it was, it was really well tied together. I got to, you know, that was something that, an initiative that I as an artist 
take full control over. I don't bring a publicist on board to do that. However, when we do look to extend the reach of the clothing line, that's when I'll bring on board a publicist to do something like that. So I think it's, it's really important for artists to understand that the way that the music industry is now, you'll never not do uh, some element of your own publicity. Do you agree with that, Alyssa? I think that's an important um, distinction to draw because a publicist's duties are going to be more concerned with being your liaison between the media and mm -hmm. when it comes to things that are more um, marketing based or more consumer based, you like how you're facing your fans, um, how you're interacting with your fans, I think that's always best to do yourself, especially you know when it comes to social media. I think it is really um, it's really fun to get like a glimpse into your favorite artist's personality based on mm -hmm. what their voice is like on Twitter, what their voice is like on Facebook, and I think it's really obvious when you can tell what posts are from the artist and what posts are from maybe like a publicist posting to their page. I always try to encourage artists to handle things that have things that are of interest <laughs> to fans themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, see, I see a lot of um, on on a lot of artists' page that when management is posting something, they'll sign off on the post as management. I don't mind and that. When, I I like that. Do you, you like that, Marcia? Yeah. Well, not that I like it. I, I completely agree with Alyssa. I think an artist should run their own Twitter. However, um, if you know, if if you're a band that's you know having a hard time posting everything you're supposed to be posting, and you're gonna have a manager post, yeah, at least if you say that, I think it's honest, so that the fans know when it it's usually the artist, but this time it's someone stepping in, and it actually makes it okay, I think, you know. But don't lie. You know, what I mean, Twitter people are expecting a voice. You know, and, and you, you don't don't lie. <laughs> it's basically yeah, yeah. as simple as that. Be honest, right? You know, be, be transparent and uh, yeah, yeah. And sense. I think it's you're better off not posting if you're going to have somebody post on your behalf. Like post less, but post authentically. Is yeah. Is, you know, it it is an extension of your publicity every time you post. So, uh, and that's the part that you're taking on board yourself. One something that um, J Lo said. Was it JLo or? Well, she was supposed to be on the show tonight, right? She was. <laughs> but we got you, so we cancelled her. I know. I know. Well, of course. <laughs> Jeez. Um, uh, I think it was JLo that said this. Um, or it was one of those people from one of those big shows, uh, those talent shows, just said that she wants, that the beauty of, of social media now is that I can remove a publicist from a lot of the things that I need to say to my fan base and I can go direct now. Um, it's much more immediate and it's and and I just say it straight with the voice that I would want to say. And I think that that's awesome. I think that, that that's a good thing and that artists need to build up to having that immediate contact with <clears throat> excuse me, with fans, but then there's the, the right time to be using a publicist, especially if you've got a release or something big coming up. Yeah, and I think a publicist can help you, you know, some people are very eloquent and others maybe need someone to proofread through something and be like, I think what you're trying to say is this, but the words that you chose sound like you're saying that, because um, that can be sort of an issue with social media as a whole is it can be hard to edit yourself and it can be hard yeah. to know, like, what is a thought that... I had in the shower this morning that maybe I should just keep to myself or <laughs> what is actually worth putting into writing and blasting out to thousands of people. Is this going to be interesting or endearing or sincere? Like, Is, is this serving some purpose or am I just bored in a waiting room typing away on Twitter? Yeah. Do you, so, so as a publicist, <clears throat> excuse me, for a band, when you're working on a camp, we tend to work more via campaign or long term as like an artist publicist. Um, I typically work more campaign. Um, I think if somebody is going to have little slower periods during the year when they're not going to be particularly active, I don't think it's necessary for them to be paying someone. <laughs> um, I will work with the same artist for years and years on end, but there's active periods and inactive mm -hmm. periods. Um, you know, if you're going to take four months to work on writing your next record and you're not going to tour and you're not going to release any music, you probably don't need a publicist for those four months. You can probably yeah. handle things on your own. Um, typically, you know, just going back to 
you know, how much I can get you has to do with what you give me to work with. Um, typically, campaigns will be about four to six months surrounding the release of an album and a tour and videos and, you know, when you when you really have something to say and push out into the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I want to backtrack something too, if, if that's okay with you, Lee. I had said something earlier. I said something about having a Canadian publicist, and it wasn't time for UK or American publicists. And I was just thinking that's that's not exactly true. Um, it is time when you when you put out a record, especially in today's day and age. I mean, everything's released. You can't even control when things are released in certain regions anymore. It's worldwide, right? It really mm -hmm. comes down to funds. It comes down to you have a certain budget, and you got to look at what's the most important place to put in, which is another aspect of publicity, right? I mean, unless you have unlimited funds, which, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to decide what's the most important place. You know? Okay, so no, for maybe me, I'll you know, that situation, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, you know, it was it was right to focus on, my, uh, with an actual publicist in Canada, right? Um, it, it just wasn't financially the right time otherwise. But, you know, it definitely, I, I wanted to backtrack on that, and it went along with what you're saying. It's, it's definitely important to think worldwide too, you know. And you don't, you don't have to buy all the things all the time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Like, if you went into the doctor, you wouldn't need to get every procedure possible. You get the procedures that you need. Yeah. Um, and there are times. For, <laughs> yeah, unless you're a hypochondriac. <laughs> um, but you know, every now and then, uh, an artist abroad will approach me about a record and one of the first things I ask is are you going to have distribution in the US before you hire me for US publicity are you thinking of touring here is it going to be in stores here is it going to be an online retailers here because you can still if, if an artist has things on Bandcamp people can still mm. pay for files and physical copies but if you don't have clear strategic plans for a certain region or country it might not be worth it yeah, mm -hmm. and, and this is where things like Google Analytics are awesome um, and Facebook Analytics and things like that. If you are seeing spikes in different regions around the world, going to somebody like Alyssa and saying, so I want to hire you to release, you know, to do the publicity for my album in the US. And she says, are you thinking of touring here? And you say, well, not yet, but my Google Analytics say that I have a massive spike in the US and I'd like to monopolize on that. What do you think? These are the numbers that I'm seeing. Is it worth us exploring this. That's an initial conversation that makes sense. Yeah. But just having the idea of, well, fuck, I want to be famous in America, make me famous. Yeah. The response yeah, you're yeah, probably no. going to get from Melissa is, stop wasting my time. <laughs> right, Alyssa? Yeah, you know, it, no one has a fame wand, and I think it is, it's wise to... Um, to look at that sort of data and also looking at like Bandcamp sales, you know, SoundCloud also shows you analytics of where your plays are coming from. Mm -hmm. um, on the label side of things, an artist I work with called Bambara, they went on their first European tour in like five years and they sold tons of records. It was such a pleasant surprise. You know, it seemed, it seemed like a little bit of a risk that they didn't really have much of a presence in Europe before that, but it worked. So sometimes you you do have really good results just by getting in there. Um, but I think there's so much data we have access to and all these different online platforms, and you might as well at least look at it and try to guide your decisions using that. Yeah. When I was um, had all that crazy Twilight stuff going on, I wish that I understood uh, everything that was happening with Google Analytics. And it was just too early on in my career to understand all the different regions things were popping in. When I did take my Google Analytics back and my YouTube analytics and start looking at where things were spiking, I realized like I was getting 2,000 plays on YouTube videos a day in Brazil, uh, mm -hmm. and I had no idea. I you love know, those Brazilians. Yeah, yes. man. I would have too if I had gone there and done a gig. You know, <laughs> like at that time, Brazil was talking loads about my music but because I didn't understand how to monopolize on that, I didn't know what to do. But that's why we have a DIY phase and it's why we go through our careers and try different things so that we can spike on different, I guess, different Oh, groups. please, Lee, don't get me started on missed opportunities. <laughs> we don't want to see me tell cry on this us. show. No, we don't tell want us. To see me Tell I've already got a voice of someone that sounds like they've been crying for the last like ten hours. <laughs> no, you know I can't even think of any anyone in particular right now. But there's definitely been missed opportunities based on a lack of knowledge, based on a lack, like you said, you just didn't know. And I've had that too before. I mean, definitely. I mean, back in the MySpace days, that 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 
that's really where I got. Uh, no, I was. That's really where I got a lot of, of my my initial fan base as a solo artist. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to monopolize on that though. I didn't realize I should go on tour. <laughs> I didn't realize, yeah. you know, how to really use that. Um, and, you know, so but you live and learn from that, right? You learn how to stay honest while also being able to utilize these things. Um, but yeah. <laughs> this is this is why I say to artists again and again and again: don't rush your DIY face. It's your stomping ground. It's where you learn how to do so much so that when you are ready to take things to the next level, you've lived it. You are more professional about things. You understand how hard a publicist's job is because you've tried to do it yourself. Uh, you know, you understand what it's like to book tours. You understand what it's like to be a manager. You, you've done all of that yourself and so you'll willingly hand over that money to a publicist uh, because they're doing a good job. And you'll know what to look for in a publicist. And, and also when this you're... person does it for a living. This is what they do every day. Yeah. Go on, Alyssa. And when you're, um, when you're doing things on your own, you can still do things strategically and you can still plan. You know, even if you're, you're doing things yourself, you can still take a little time where you're privately putting your plans together before releasing your record, you know, instead of uh, yeah. putting your masters on SoundCloud the second you get them back <laughs> from engineer. <laughs> Um, a great strategy. I wish I could remember where this quote came from, but the other day I heard something I really liked that said, like, you know, a man would do nothing at all if he waited until the point where no one could find fault with it, which yeah. really made a lot of sense <laughs> to me. But like, you know, you you could sort of like sit in hiding, plotting and plotting and plotting and trying to like perfect everything to the point where like no one could possibly critique what you're doing and and you won't possibly make any sort of mistakes. But then you'll never do anything. Sometimes you yeah. just have to. You, know, you get things done by doing them and just giving it's it a shot. It's kind of like the balance, right? Like plan, but also don't don't wait ten years. Like, yeah. um, what was it? What band was it? Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Putting out another record. It came out ten years later. <laughs> that worked out really well for them. Million dollars. Oh no, seventy-seven million, million dollars. Something yeah, stupid some, and outrageous and ungodly amount. and. Uh, you know, eight different producers. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Go, Axl Rose. Yeah. He was the perfect oh, example of what not to do when making a yes. record and how to send Absolutely. a record label broke. Uh, and that how was... to destroy your career. No one yeah. gave a crap. <laughs> like, relatively for a band that big, right? It was just ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, yeah. I wish he had a DIY face because he would have learned how <laughs> not to fuck that up. But anyway, um, moving right along. With regards to publicity, don't do's. Um, well, publicists don't do this. Marcio, I know that you have had a couple of publicists. Let's talk about, without being specific, uh, I guess not naming names is what I mean. Tell us about your journey in finding the right publicist because uh, you've found that now, haven't you? The right publicist for yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. I'm a right Canadian publicist for sure. Uh, but, you know, uh, well, anyways, basically, <laughs> I, I went for... I had first contact the publicist that, um, you know, promised me everything. I, well, I guess I, they didn't promise me before I contact. I contacted a, a couple different ones that I thought I'd, I'd be interested in based on who they've worked with. But, you know, not only do you have to contact someone based on who they work with, but you have to contact someone who you, you understand each other, where there's a common understanding. And I've actually learned this in all professional relationships in, the, in any industry, but especially the music industry. You have to get along. You have to have some kind of yeah. rapport, or else have fun having a long term. Like I, I love that that uh, Alyssa says you that uh, you said that you have long term relationships with your with your bands. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? People that you have long term relationships with. But anyway, so I, long story short, the, there's a publicist I contacted, and you know, um, he or she took me on. <laughs> she took me on. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll at least tell you the gender. And promised me the world, right? Promised me everything. And you know, you got to keep in mind, I, I don't, I don't look at, you know, I just want to be famous. I want people to hear my music. So when, when I poured everything into my debut album, and I mean, everything, not just financially, you know, all my life savings, but everything emotionally and, and mm -hmm. mentally. And you know, you have your whole life to write your first record. So I just want to do it right. I want to get it out there right. I want as many people to hear it, and you know, be able to actually maybe at least make some of my money, my money back, so my wife doesn't kill me. Right? <laughs> and um, yeah, long story short, basically she took a lot of money and didn't do anything. And I eventually had to cancel working with her because I didn't, you know, she wanted to destroy my record. And you know, let's let's actually release this as two EPs and do it's just really crazy stuff that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Didn't understand me. 
and uh, I couldn't I couldn't get money back from that. I mean, how can you get money back from this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got a, a little bit back, but the point is, f from that situation, I learned don't trust anyone who tr who promises you anything, and I truly live by that. Um, ended up. Uh, finding someone who I respect the work that she does. She works with some wonderful bands, which means nothing, though. It means nothing <laughs> you know, if they work with wonderful bands. Why do you bands. say that? Because, because that doesn't that. mean they're going to do anything for you. Just If if a publicist or, or a producer or anybody in, in the arts happens to work with someone who's a huge name and maybe a band that I really love, and I'm like, oh, awesome, I'm going to be, I'm gonna, everyone's going to love me just like they love that band. That's crazy yeah. you know because first of all you don't know when that publicist got it were they on there on developing the band or did they did they get the role by luck and they're working with this artist who's already established right it's not going to be that hard for me to get a, a large you know a large artist yeah. on publicity right but yeah so I, I really I the same same went for when I chose the producer for my album you know I, I had it's he's an awesome amazing producer and I, I respect all the work he did but also I had to say it's some bigger producers, quote unquote, that I turned down because they weren't right for it. So, you know, these are things that you learn along the way. You gotta pick people that are right for your project. Don't get starry eyed by names that people have on there. They could have been the assistant that worked with that person. They're not gonna tell Lisa knows these things. They're not gonna yeah. you know, so talk to the person, have a preliminary meeting and you know so yeah, sorry, I went right off there. But no, I, no, I learned you, that, my was well, that was perfect. Every my lesson. artist every artist is different and everyone is at a different point in their career. You know mm -hmm. every now and then I'll be working a EP campaign that's like one month in at the same time as working on a full length with a band that I've been with for five years and they've been a band for ten years mm -hmm. and you know, that band gets great coverage at a really big national outlet and your smaller band is like well you got you got them spin magazine why didn't you get that for me and <laughs> it's sort of like you know it's not that I uh, it's not that I had one credit to Spin Magazine, and I, I chose to give it to one band over another. You know, it's like you're you're at different points in your career. You know, this band has been a band for a very long time and has done some very significant things. So they're at that point that it worked out for them. Um, yeah. You know, it's not cookie cutter. Not everybody is um, going to be a fit for every publication. And I think rapport is so important, as you touched upon. Um, you've got to have good working relationships, and you know. It's good to at least get on the phone before you hire someone, and just see if you know you guys sort of click personality-wise because everything yeah. else is going to be so much more enjoyable and so much smoother. Um, every now and then, I've worked with a client that from day one is like very apprehensive and suspicious, um, and then you're getting five emails a day asking for status updates. So you're spending all of your time <laughs> writing status updates. And you know, at a certain point, you have to be like, you know, I love you, I love working with you, but if you email me five times a day, all I'm doing is replying to your emails. <laughs> and, uh, there's there's a good happy medium working relationship that that clicks, and you sort of get into the flow. And like you said about working with people for years, like you figure out how each other like to communicate, and and it just gets smoother as time goes on. Well, and so having that gone. Lee, I just want to ask Alyssa if that's why she works with people long term is because you have like a long term goal for them, you know? Because I think that's beautiful. Because I, I the other thing that makes artists like myself apprehensive is when someone's like, okay, we're gonna do a three month campaign for you, which I know that's how it goes, but then you know we might never hear from you again. So I, I like the idea of working with people that are in it with you. You know, I want I want to have people believe in what I'm doing and have it, you know, and and work with me long term is so that we both have yeah. goals together. You know, that that's the way it should be. I think. And I think the we might never hear from you again thing can totally go both ways. You know, I can work a three month campaign for an artist and, you know, practically like kill myself and like wreck my sanity over it and, you know, stay up till like three in the morning mm -hmm. every night for three months just sending emails and, you know, it's a, it's a job of high highs and low lows. Someone gets a great interview or a great feature and you're on top of the world. You get an email from a writer that's like, ah, I just didn't like this and you're just like crushed and ripping your hair out. So, you know, in the same way, you can, really give something your all for three months and you have no guarantee that they're going to hire yeah. you back. So it's it's really nice when you have these long relationships that you know you can focus on getting things done instead of um, constantly campaigning for re-election like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wanted to add to that by saying, oh, I hear bands throw the word around publicist like it's a new, like it's a passage, a rite of passage. Oh, I have a publicist now. 
Oh, and, uh, do you? And, <laughs> and they're constantly like, oh, I just need to call my publicist. <laughs> Leave your publicist alone to do their job, man. Like, Please, you know what I'm can saying? We be, can, we be, can we be music industry douches and start doing that? <laughs> Please? <laughs> No. That's I'll just be like, sorry, sorry, I have to call a client. A client. Yeah. Hey, can I do an interview with you? Oh, wait, wait. I gotta call my publicist. Just, just yeah. wait. <laughs> Douche. And, and, and the thing is, like, that this is a professional relationship. It's not. It's not necessarily a mark of success. Like, if you have a publicist, you're hiring them. You're paying them money to do a job. If they're spending time with you, it's it. The more time they spend with you, the less time they spend getting you out there and, and connecting with people who they could be promoting you with. Yeah. Isn't that right, Alyssa? <laughs> and, and I think a lot of that, you know, setting setting and discussing expectations at the beginning of a working relationship is so, so important. Um, and having a discussion about, you know, like what is good communication to you? You know, I might have an artist I talk to a couple times a week and they could think they never hear from me. Or I might have someone that only writes back yes. to me like once a month. So it's, it's different for everyone. Yes. Um, and it can be sort of good to establish on the front end, like you'll get reports once a month, and then I'll keep you involved in between as I hear of things or figure out some sort of system um, so that no one feels in the dark. Um, everybody understands each other's goals and what's important. Uh, you can save a whole lot of stress by getting that out of the way on the front end. Awesome. So when, when artists are looking to find a publicist for the first time, they may be quite confused about how they approach that situation. It can be very intimidating. I remember the first time I reached out to a publicist. Uh, that was a horrible experience only because I, <laughs> my expectations were, were very different. Um, uh, for me, it was a situation I wasn't ahead of the game. I didn't see the, the association I was having with the Twilight thing going to happen as quickly as it did. It was all fan-led. I didn't know what to do. It was erupting online and I didn't know how to get ahead of that ball because once something happens with Twilight, it's, it was, and it was difficult. Um, I should have been better prepared. Um, so Alyssa, tell us about how uh, you go about finding the right publicist for you, how you approach think doing it. I think a good thing is to, you know, do your research, look at a lot of different companies' websites. Um, and when I say company, I'm also including people who, who work as individual people. You know, they'll still have a website that has their roster. And I think it's mm -hmm. good to look for artists that are in your same vein and especially a handful that might be larger than you that you admire. Um, but it's also good to make sure that a, a significant portion of the roster are at your same level. Um, if you are an artist just wrapping up their DIY period and a publicity firm works with huge, huge artists, you, you might not be the best fit. You might, um, mm. you know, you, you don't necessarily want to be like the tiniest band on their roster. Um, it, it can look very <laughs> dazzling when you're like, oh, everybody on their roster is like playing arena tours. If you're not at that point yet, maybe this isn't the best fit. Mm. Um, from there, I think it is best to email, not Facebook message. That's been my current uh, pet peeve. I'll get a mm -hmm. random Facebook request. And I'm like, who's this guy? We don't have any friends in common. I've never met him. He's, yeah. His face doesn't look familiar. And uh, then I get a Facebook message at 2 in the morning on my personal account being like, hey, how much do you charge for publicity? All right, I'll email you next time, Alyssa. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and every time I think to myself, like, if you just Google, like, Alyssa DeHay's email address, you'll find it. It's posted yeah. in many places. So, oh, God, it's like she's a publicist. She needs to, <laughs> you know, it's, well, she's not going to be the hard person to find. It, yeah, exactly. It's also, it's it comes off unprofessional, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it may be hard to find an artist's personal email address. That 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 I can understand about it being hard to find, but it's not going to be hard to find a publicist's email yeah. address. And if you know, it is, have, don't use them. You know, I have contacted people on Facebook before, and the rare rare case that I cannot find them. But you know what I always do? Hi, this is who I am. Uh, is there an email I can reach you at? Immediately, what I do. Because I just because the email, yeah. I mean, that's you give the person the opportunity to get back to you when they when they can. You know what I mean? That's okay. I think that's that's in my opinion the only 
okay time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and I want to okay. extend that by saying that there is a professional etiquette to um, to use when when emailing someone, um, and we need to make that clear. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of artists are not taught, even if they go to to school, uh, to music school, and do a degree in music. The one thing we're consistently finding is that the majority of music schools globally are not teaching artists how to be professional. So what they should say when they approach different professionals. So Alyssa, please tell us. I know we spoke about this in the last episode that you were on, but what's the professional way to approach? And uh, a publicist, when you are constructing your first introductory email to them, what should you say? Um, I would just say, you know, hi, my name is Alyssa Hayes. I'm looking to release a record six months from now. You know, let people know what your time frame is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm at the point where I'm ready to hire a publicist. I was looking over your roster. Or, it's nice to include how someone got a hold of my information, whether it was like, oh, you know, Lee referred you to me or I'm a big fan of the so-and-sos and I saw they were your publicist. That helped give me some sort of context um, as to just, you know, like where this inquiry is coming from. Um, I love when people include like a private SoundCloud stream so I can go ahead and hear what your album's going to sound like and figure out if I would be a good fit for it. Um, mm -hmm. I think including a link to a private stream is always preferable to attaching a whole bunch of MP3s. So just, you know, a, a nice cordial introduction some information of when you're releasing, how you're releasing. Is it on a label? Or are you self-releasing? Um, and somewhere where I can listen to the music because we can both save each other a ton of time. If I can you know, maybe give it a listen and maybe it's just not quite my style, we can go ahead and direct you to someone who might be a better fit right off the bat. And how, how soon after not hearing back from you should they follow up? I would give it a week. Um, I get a, I'm very, very grateful for this, but I get a lot of inquiries from bands, and my first priority is taking care of the bands that I'm currently working with, um, mm -hmm. and that is already a night and day job. So I want to make sure that all my deadlines are hit for the people that are currently hiring me out, and then when I get some spare moments, I'll start going through the submissions and listening to it. So I think... Um, maybe giving it a week and just sending a, a nice follow-up, not like, uh, well, I haven't heard from you, so I guess you hate me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what artists are like. We're all like that. <laughs> you We're hated my record. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get this. Why am I even doing this? <laughs> I'm a failure right because, because the publicist I haven't even hired yet uh, or hasn't had a chance to yeah. listen to any is already well, rejected. The same, goes for, the same goes for contacting writers. I'll often hear people say, like, oh, well, I emailed a whole bunch of people. I didn't hear back from anyone. It's like, well, did you follow up? Did yeah. you follow up twice? Um, did you follow up with more information? Like, did you try to contact them in an alternate way? You, know, you might not hear back from people Absolutely. in many different fields just with the first brief email. I'm terrible and, for that, personally. And doing doing that, I had one artist who wanted to ask me to do some coaching with him uh, around his release. Contact me through email, contact me through Facebook Messenger, contact me through Twitter DM, uh, and then followed up on all of those things again every day after a week for a whole other week and then found my cell number and started text messaging me asking and I was like I don't want to work with you now. I have no interest in in you're going to be a royal pain in the ass uh, and if this is how you're going to be with me I can't imagine what it would be like to coach you through into your music entrepreneur phase and how you're going to be with the people that I would connect you with. So. You know, it's it's important to understand how to be professional, um, and an initial email to somebody like Alyssa saying, "Hi, I need a publicist. How much do you charge?" That's that's not an initial email. Yeah. That's not professional. Uh, and it, it's it, it's good to also be clear about what the contact is over because you know I'm a publicist. I have a blog. I have a record label. <laughs> and sometimes I just get an email that says like, "Here's my record. What do you think?" And I have to write back and say, like, what, what do I think in what capacity? Is it a fit for <laughs> my label? Do you want me to handle your publicity? Are you looking for me to post on my blog? You know, just sort of being clear about, like, what it is you yeah. want. You know what? I approach writing emails, um, not just to everyone, but it's professional as well, as 
how would I talk to them in person? Would I walk up to you? If I met you for the first time, would I walk up to you? Hi, here's my record. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Sign me. Do you know? It's, I would have a conversation with you. I'd let you know who I am, and you know, and, and I, I often, you know, wish them well as well. Your people, you know what I mean? I get emails as well, and I, I it's, it's really nice to just that the person took some time to say, you know, I wish you well or something, of <laughs> some nice words. Yeah. <laughs> Not just always me, 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 do this for me. So. Manners well, and, and politeness and all that kind of thing make a difference. And if it doesn't work out, it's again important to be polite because sometimes I will listen to yeah. a record and it's just not its not my favorite record. its I'm not a good fit for it and I don't want to take it on. And I'll always write back and say, you know, I'm not the best fit for this. I'll let you know if I think of someone who is. Um, best of luck to you. And I've gotten some very angry replies. Oh, and I always mean like, you know, if, if you're approaching me as a publicist and I'm not in love with this record, you don't want me to take your money. That's a really exactly. like I'm, I'm I'm refusing your money. That's something um, that should say a lot. lot. And it's, yeah. You know what? That that actually reminds me of something I wanted to say. Okay. You know, you asked earlier when's the right time to hire a publicist. Well, I think that first of all, you have to be pushing something. Okay. You have to have something that's going to come. Some people, I'm sure, listen. You've had people contact you with nothing that they're doing, and they just. Right? Hey, we need a publicist, but for what? What for? <laughs> I guarantee you it's happened to you. I wouldn't believe it if you said it, it hasn't happened to you a ton of times. Right? And uh, you have to be pushing something, but also I think that a, a really good sign that someone is not a good publicist to hire is if you are just starting out and you really have, don't have anything going yet and you haven't done much, but the person's willing to take you on. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> You know? Yeah, but you have to have a reason to be talking to bloggers because they're not going to be able to get you any press, are they? Like, yeah. you know, we're we're all uh, we're all magical, special snowflakes, but just the fact that you exist <laughs> does not necessarily make you. <laughs> uh, I love that. Really? I'm gonna get that tattooed on me. I'm a magical, special. <laughs> Fuck, that's amazing. And you're, you're individual and you're unique and you're just magical. But you know, just the fact that you exist isn't necessarily a story. <laughs> that is a fantastic note to end the discussion on. I'm going to take that into my day. Oh, man, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm a magical special snowflake. That is brilliant. Um, and the quote of the episode, thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> Guys, we've covered loads about publicity and going from um, DIY to pro. Uh, I hope that, that any artists watching really got a lot out of the discussion. Um, I'm going to ask you now a different, because you've both been on the show before, I'm going to ask you a different question uh, as a last question than what I normally ask. And I'm going to start with you, Marcio. Did you notice I haven't <laughs> called you Marciano once, except for just Yeah, now. what's going on? I know, right? I had to do it just Whatever. once. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, Marcio, what's the best decision you've made so far for your music career? <laughs> well, you know, this is actually going to tie in with what Ly Alyssa said <laughs> earlier. You know, you can wait forever to do something. And that's something I kind of did with my debut full-length record because I wanted it to be perfect. You know, I released EPs mm -hmm. over the course of, you know, two, three years or whatever. Um, just, I wanted it to be perfect. But, you know, it took it took a tragedy that happened in my life to make me realize just how short life, you know, how short and precious life is to realize that I could, I could be gone in a year. I could be gone in two years. And I've just got to do it. So that led me to make my debut full-length record. Um, so I guess my, my grade, my the best decision I, I, I made. I know it's very broad. I'll give you a broad one. I'll give you a more specific one. The broad one would be to just make the record. Just, just mm. set out to do it. You know, and, and something that I that originally thought would take forever, I had it done and all planned and in such a short amount of time. I recorded it in two weeks. It all just kind of happened because I just set out in my mind, I'm going to do this, right? And that mm. has just led to a whole other, you know, so I'm talking to you right now, right? But you have to do it. You have to be decisive. So maybe decisiveness Decisiveness could be one of the best things that I've learned to do. Being decisive and confident, not cocky, but confident in what you're doing. Um, and you can't get confident until you start working your butt off to be good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it, the, my first EP. The best piece of advice I got from the producer I was working with was, Lee, there has to be an end date. You know, just make make the EP, put it out, um, because the week after you put it out, you're gonna hate it. You would have 
you'll listen to it and you'll think, well, I could do that better now, and I could do that better now, and that better now. And but I should have put the songs in a different order. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. But as you know, and it's going to happen no matter what you do. But same. But uh, once you've finished it and you've put it out, you've, now you can move on to promoting it and getting it out there. And 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 we're artists. We're always going to want to do better with the art that we put out there. But you that's should. Just I think. Okay. Yeah, when you're completely satisfied with the art you've made, I think that you should just be done. Because I don't think any you should ever be completely satisfied with the art you've made. Yeah, <laughs> but should put always... an end date to it. Put an yes. end. Date and know that no matter what that end date is, yeah. the day after that, you're going to think you could have done it better. So just, yeah. yeah, so I totally agree with you with that one. Did you so want to give us a more specific one? Uh, I, I guess a more specific one would probably be uh, making a decision uh, to start hiring other people. You know, uh, Lee, you know, I'm not sure if you know Ross Barber, Alyssa, but Lee knows uh, Ross Barber of Electric Kiwis, an amazing web designer. And you know there came there came a time again before I released my record where I decided I've got to get a proper proper website you know and I'm not going to do this myself anymore I don't know what I'm doing mm. you know along with hiring a publicist so I guess um, and, and and hiring uh, people to uh, to help with booking with shows you know and everything so I guess it's it's again kind of broad but it's a bit more specific to when yep. making a decision to start bringing people onto your team you yep. know. Because my wife could only do the job of all these people for so long. <laughs> she has her own life to live. <laughs> and I think when you when you bring other people on, um, you know, if you have a friend that wants to help you with something, that is awesome. Let them. Um, but sometimes it reaches a point where it, it's very hard to nag people that are helping you for free, or yeah. out of the goodness yeah. of of their heart. You know, if you need a website turned around in one month it's going to be hard to bug that friend and keep them on schedule and on deadline if they're doing it for free in their spare time. But if you hire someone and let them know, I need this in one month, probably yeah. higher chance of it getting done and getting done on time. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Alyssa, what's the best decision you've made so far for your music career? I think, I think um, the, so the best decisions that I have made are trusting my intuition and turning things down. I think um, when you first start out in any career, you're so flattered by every opportunity and you want to do everything. Um, it's not humanly possible to do everything. There's not enough of you to go around. But sometimes something just doesn't feel right. Um, for a concrete example, uh, I was approached about a reality TV show about women in the music industry. And I just didn't have a good feeling about it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it did not seem like a good idea. It was flattering, but it didn't seem like a good idea. And you know, looking back, I'm glad I didn't. Or projects that you're like, well, you know, I could use the money right now, but I don't really love this record. And then you turn it down, and you get an angry email back, and you're like, I'm so glad I turned that down because now yeah. I'm seeing um, this ugly, rude side of this person. Um, so figuring out when to turn things down is just as important as figuring out when to you know, jump on an opportunity. I often I say that, that. It's the things that I've said no to that have defined my career more than the things that I've said yes to. Yes. So yes. I absolutely agree with that. Um, don't be scared to say no. If, if the yeah. opportunities uh, are right for you, they'll reappear. Uh, and, and it's a sure fire sign that you should probably take them up within a couple of times of them reappearing if they do. So guys, this no, has been an awesome conversation. Thank you so much for coming on again. Um, thank you for having us. Absolutely. An, it's, it's my have pleasure. Have an amazing thank Peace, you. love, and peanut butter. Thank <laughs> Take you. care. Much love. See ya. Thank you for tuning in to Season 2, Episode number 24 of The Music Spring. If you missed any of the episode, log on to YouTube after the show and watch this again. Check us out online. Search for The Music Spring on Facebook, Google+, Plus, YouTube, SoundCloud, or share on Twitter. Hashtag The Music Spring. To get involved, join the mailing list, or for more information on the presenters in this panel, log on to our website, themusicspring.com. The Music Spring is free and always will be, but if you like what we do and find the information informative, please consider supporting us on patreon.com forward slash the music spring. The music spring is taking a small break next week and returning in two weeks time. So tune in then as we present the art of being an artist. See you then. <laughs>